everybody uh there's no intro to this video because it's 5 30 in the morning and i'm not putting makeup on yet um so i'm going to do a dallas duffel bag as you saw in the description but i'm doing it completely different to any other way i've ever done it so i found a quicker cheaper way to make these bags basically so i have just got a piece of double-sided foam in here and i have ironed both the outside and the inside to the foam. There's no other interfacing in here. This is a weatherproof canvas from Spotlight. It's um, UV resistant and it's, it's floppier and it frays more than mine and it costs more. But for an outside of a dance bag, which is what this is going to be, I thought it was a really good choice for fabric. Now I have got no interfacing on this because I'm making the bag floppy. And then, so what I've done is I ironed both sides on, and then I have overlocked the edge to, for two reasons. One, it's now holding, or three reasons actually, it's holding all three pieces together at the edge. It is preventing the black from fraying, and it is squished down the edge because I'm going to use the binding machine on my cylinder arm to finish this bag. Um, another way that I have cut down costs is I have bought this 50ml or 2 inch um, strapping from Vitamin Threads and then I've got a matching blue. Now I know it doesn't look like it matches perfectly but this one's polyester and this one's cotton. So it's the same dye colours. So this is what I'm going to bind it in. This will be all my strapping and then everything is pretty much as normal. Uh, so I'm also going to make this cotton... Or not cotton, whatever this is. Um, I'm also going to make it my um, O-ring connectors. So I'm using O-rings instead of D-rings today, just for something a bit different. Uh, so I'm using this for the outside side parts, which is why I want it to match so bad, as well as the binding on the inside of the bag. Um, so for now, I just need the two side pieces. Nearly told you how much I cut then. I don't give out measurements, guys. And then I'm just going to melt this in so it doesn't fray while I'm trying to work with it because I hate it when it does that. Right. So I am going to start with my side pieces since they're the ones I've just kind of prepped and talked about. And my Lord of the Rings bowl. I've got these O-rings. I got these from Spotlight forever ago before I started um, my supplies for hardware. So I just thought I'd use them up since I had enough to do the matching three bags that I'm making. So you can use D-rings or O-rings. Um, I treat them the same. So I'm going to do the same as I always do. Fold under an inch. Um, and then clip it with two clips. I always use two clips because then both sides can't shift. Like that. Uh, so I'm using M40 thread for all of this, including the binding. And so then to find the center, I'm just going to fold it in half. And you can put a clip there. I'm not going to clip it with my snips like I normally would because I don't want to cut my... Um, overlocking that I did or surging depending on where you live is depending on what you call it so I'm just going to line it up in the center and stitch an eighth of an inch down the edge and then I'm going to twist and go across and then twist and go down the other side back stitching always back stitching then we're going to do the same again, and I'm going to chain stitch them. So today's video is pretty much how I sew what I'm not on camera, uh, because I have done this video before, uh, just not with binding, which is why I'm recording it again. Now I do have a binding machine for this, uh, a binding tool for this machine, uh, but it's for when I'm doing like double fold bias so when I'm using cotton. Alright, so those are those done. I can put them aside till the end. Literally. 
And so now I'm going to, again with the melting, always with the melting, I'm just going to uh, measure out all the strapping I need so I can put this away. I love that I have my ruler sticker. Um, with any luck this weekend, I might actually put the vinyl that I bought for my desk and put my new sticker on because I'm going to start my sticker further down so I get more of a measurement. So these, currently what I'm cutting, are going to be the handles. And obviously they're a bit thick to hold, so I'm going to fold them over at the end and stitch them as well. So stick around for that. Again, it's not something I've done in videos, which is why we're recording today. And it being so early, I should get the whole video done before people wake up. Okay. Shoulder strap. And again with the melting. I have so many lotus floating around this room. There's almost one debris um, sewing machine now because I just I melt everything that's polyester. Uh, so I bought a 10 meter roll of this, so I should be able to get um, three bags out of one roll of 10 meters. That's the plan anyway. So I'm gonna grab my hardware. I'm using um, plastic clips. I have actually looked for metal clips. Um, to me, they just don't necessarily look strong enough. That's why I haven't bought any yet. All right, so I'm gonna do my cool zigzag that I'm a little bit obsessed with. So I'm gonna stitch across. And I always start at the edge of the plastic uh, because then you can't go too far. I'm just twisting it around, back stitching in that corner, trim off all of those tails. Now with these clips, I always have them kind of pointing so the, the clip part is down because these ones aren't swivel clips, they're just moving clips. So they move back and forth but they don't swivel around, so I like it to be so that they clip down like that. No real reason, I just, I don't know, that's how I clip bags on, so that's the way I do it. Really? No other reason? You don't have to do it that way either. Okay, so the strap's done as well, so I can put that away now. That was like a super fast strap and it's a fun colour. If you do want to use strapping but you still want it to like completely match a bag that you're doing, you could also just sew like a fabric strip onto it. That would still be fun. Okay, so we're doing Tory pockets today as always, um, but I've just cut them different. So this technically is the, the 8x12 that I always use, but I folded it in half a long way so that I get a long pocket. And then this is technically the same size, even though it doesn't look like it, but I folded it on the long edge. So short edge, long edge, same template, because this is my jam. So if you watched yesterday's little video, I'm all about my zipper templates. I think they're amazing. I'm definitely a little bit obsessed with them. I use them for everything because they're just so much quicker. And then I need an 11 inch for this one. So I'm just going to pull that out and do that as well. I woke up this morning and there was like a whole bunch of you had actually watched the video and purchased this set. I love this set, it is amazing. I just like to switch it up. All right. So I'm now going to take one of my lining pieces and 
because it's almost a square, I always have to check. Now I want the pocket closer to the bottom than the top. So that's where I'm going to place it. And I eyeball it because I've had enough practice that I can eyeball this really well. Uh, but feel free to measure. The easiest way to measure it if you're putting the pocket in the same spot as me is to just fold, clip the center and match the center. all those tails and I'm going to fold it in half and I always just go over the edge of my table to get there and for those that are wondering these are my class A scissors and uh, my Fisker scissors just aren't next to me I must say I very much like Fisker's um, customer service I broke the spring in my scissors and so I contacted them and they helped me like straight away within a day. Right, so I'm going to crease this because it's waterproof canvas, I don't need to iron it. But if I crease it before I push it through the hole, it's easier to fold flat. So when I'm ironing cotton fabrics, I do the same thing. So I'll iron that away from the hole and then it just sits so much flatter. So much quicker, so much less effort. And I'm all about minimal effort, maximum result. All right, zipper cutting scissors. You should have a different set for those. You can just buy like cheap crafty scissors for that. That's one zipper. While I've got the zipper out, I might as well cut all the other ones that I need. Um, and because it's the Tory pocket size, I um, I know what I need to cut. And then I do. To there. And then this is my main zip. And this can get folded up to put away. So even though my table is usually very messy, I always manage to put my zips away as I go. I just find it so much better. All right, so this is actually the last of the hardware for this bag. The reason I'm making it this way is because it's all about like a minimal, cheaper version of bags. Obviously I could put bag feet and interfacing and like a million other things. But sometimes it's just to do something nice and simple. Dance bag doesn't need bag feet. It just gets thrown on the floor. It doesn't need all the interfacing. It can be a floppy bag. It's more like a gym bag. As long as you choose the right fabrics. So the waterproof lining means I don't have to interface the lining pieces. Okay. That's all the zips done, so I can put the zipper scissors away. Then I'm going to grab the zipper I need for this. And this is the bottom, and I always put my zipper pull so it closes to the left. It's just my thing. You obviously don't have to do this. If you're left-handed, you might actually want to do it the other way. Trim off that tail now so it doesn't annoy me. I'm going to get to the zipper, needle down, zip it open just a little bit. Needle down, pivot over the end. Stitched, seal the zip up. Now, because I'm binding this bag, I actually don't need to keep any of the pockets open, which is something new for my videos. You usually always have to keep a pocket open. But because I don't, I'm just going to keep folding that out of my way. Back 
stitch, come back, trim the tail. So that's now all the inside pieces done as well. Now, because this frays, I'm going to get a cigarette lighter and just run it quickly around the edge. Now you have to be quick because this stuff will catch on fire. Uh, but if you don't do this, it carries on and frays the whole time you're using it. So I just hang it over the edge of the table and just give it like a quick, see, like right there, ow. And then it melts to your finger and it burns you. So you have to be really quick. It's always advised that you cut off any like super hanging ones. And I do usually do this as soon as I cut it so that I don't have the burning problem. Right, so while I'm doing it, I might as well do the other one. And then we're going to start measuring. And I'm pretty sure I don't have my measuring tape next to me. Whoops. You just want to be super quick with this. It's just to seal off all the bits that are fraying. I know you can't really see this, so I'm doing it over the edge. Um, but basically, because it's such a floppy fabric, it's easier to do it just off the edge. Right. Peel that off now. So, I need to hit pause so I can go and get my ruler. You're also going to need a chaco pen for the black right. fabric. Got it. So, making sure that you've got it the right way, I'm just going to measure from the edge because that's what the pattern does. And then I'm going to measure, I'm just going to do a little line, which I'll show you in a second. And that tells me where to stop when I'm sewing. So that little marker is just the indicator of how high the line should go in case your chalk dust goes further than expected. All right, so I've just got like a little sticky yatty line. It rubs off because it's chalk. That way. See, this size is tricky because it's only half an inch difference in width versus height. So you just have to be really careful when you're doing this. Oh, whoops, wrong end. So that's all my markings, and yes, I like to stand up while I mark. Okay, so while I've got this one, may as well do this one. So I'm going to grab my strapping and I'm going to stick it on the outside of the line. Put on the inside, your straps are too close together. And I just knotted that. There we go. I also pre-wound an extra bobbin because I know these take about one and a half bobbins to make. Only because I've already made two in different colours. So I've also done pink and purple. And for the pink and purple, I actually used the bubble printed waterproof canvas, but I don't have any blue here. So I'm just doing a solid blue because I also don't have any solid pink. So I'm just sewing up to where that little line is and then needle down, pivot, go across to the line and then stitch back down the other side. And because we are using this strapping, it does give somewhat of a structure to the bag. Like it's not completely floppy even though there's no um, interfacing at all. Set the foam in the sides. Just line it up on the line. Also, when you're sewing this, make sure there's no twist in your handle. That's obviously very important. Okay, so that's that one done. So we can do the next one. 
Now, if you've got a front and a back, you will need to um, work out which side you want your zipper pocket on. But these are all the same for me. Because there's no print, there's no embroidery. You could um, embroider or HTV a name on these. That'd be kind of fun. I did think about putting dance. Um, but then everybody does that, so that's why I didn't. And they might not want to use it for a dance bag. Might be their soccer bag. Who knows? But if you have a business where you sell your bags, you can just have that as like an optional extra. And depending on what website you've got and you do custom orders, you can actually build that into your website quite easily. Needle down, pivot. Oh, just run out of bobbin thread. Grab the next one. Strapping tends to do that though. Can I just tell you, my finger is really hurting right now from where I burnt it. I've, this is the third bag I've made and it's the first time I've burnt myself with it. So just be really careful when you're melting stuff. Alright, so I'm going to trim the tails here and at my join and trim them off the back so they don't annoy me later. Now we're up to the pocket. So I just um basically eyeball this. There's no right or wrong spot to put it. I like my zipper. I'm doing mine approximately an inch from my strapping. But obviously depending on how thick all your stuff is will be dependent on where you actually want to put it. So that's crooked. So I'm mainly using this ruler so I can make sure it's not crooked. This is just a little like six by one inch ruler that was sent to me in my one of the swapsies that I organized and I love it. I like it because it's small and convenient to move around. I think that's why I like it so much. Back stitch, lift. Trim your tails. Now this one we're going to melt as well once we've cut it because again it's a super fraying fabric. And to be honest it's not the super funnest fabric to work with. Uh, especially when you're trying to cut it, it shifts and moves. It's not stretchy. But it's very hard to try and get a straight line because it shifts under like the weight of a pen. I just do it because it's worth it. And the fabric comes 150 wide, so you get, I think I bought a meter 20 or a meter 30 and I got three of these bags out of it. So again, you see I'm creasing it and then I'm going to shove it through the hole. Maybe, maybe not. Then I'm going to take my thumbs and hook my thumbs. And then for the most part, that actually sits flat, even though this stuff is super flimsy, I guess is the right word for that. So again, I'm just going to singe where I cut so that it doesn't carry on and break. Okay, so I'm going to open the pocket up. Make sure my zipper closes to the top. Now, unfortunately, I don't have this color zip. The closest I've got is this, royal blue or turquoise. 
Um, so I can very clearly see a gap. So I will work on trying to find a colour to fill the gap that is the problem. So I'm going to stitch down or across the top. I usually go across the top or bottom, whatever is more convenient at the time. Needle down, zipper up out of the way. Now again, this fabric is very flimsy and moving. So you just, it's all about your hands on this one, if you're going to use this fabric. Um, I did actually make the Siren Beach bag that's coming out. I've done a bag out of a printed version of the weatherproof canvas. And again, make sure you melt it, because it's flimsy. But the printed stuff's slightly different to the solids, as they usually are. Um, so I, I was actually able to interface this. I probably could have interfaced this one now, but the whole point of this bag is to keep costs down. Because not everybody wants to spend $100 on a gym bag, and I understand that. Having plain colours everywhere, again, keeping the cost down. If you wanted a flimsy bag but it's made out of cotton, I would just interface everything with medium woven interfacing. Okay, so that's that zipper done. Because again, we don't need to leave any of the zipper pockets open. So now we're up to construction, almost. Sorry, zipper. So I've got these four little tabs, which are fraying a lot. Lucky me. Uh, I should have four. I do. That's all right. There's another one over there. Okay. Uh, that's a bit easier. I love my cigarette lighter holder, but sometimes it just gets in the way when I'm doing fiddly things like this. Right, that's singed enough. So I'm just putting a layer of this on both sides of the zippers because I want tabs so that the zipper tape is not in my seams for when I'm binding. So I'm going to stitch it. Trim that off, fold both of these back and top stitch without cutting off the thread. Like that, and then I'm going to do the same to this side and I'm going to chain stitch it. I'm going to bring it around the back of the machine like this, because it'll sit better for me trying to stitch it together. And again, this is this is more about how I speed well it's not even speed sewing i am still stopping to chat but this is how i sew not on video it's a little more out of whack and organic i guess but i get there in the end and that's what counts so um a zipper pocket and make sure the zippers go in the same direction now this i have made deliberately longer so my zipper tabs that i cut were two and a quarter inches to make sure that they were definitely long enough no matter what I was doing. And I cut my zip, I think, about two to two and a half inches shorter than I needed. I don't actually remember. But I deliberately made it shorter so that now I've got a decent amount so that the zip will not at any stage get into my binding edge. But you also don't want to make it so short that your tab's useless either. Now, because I'm doing this one, I'm also going to take the one that doesn't have the zipper pocket and do this one first. Now, again, this is very flimsy fabric. So you want to line up the two um, ends and then kind of pull like this and then work your way along to um, clip it. So I'm not just going to do left to right with this fabric. 
lots of reasons why. One, because I've got my handles there, they are slightly pulling on the fabric, making it harder to get it straight. Uh, and two, it's really, really like flexible fabric, which is not the easiest of things to work with. So I'm going to start at the edge, I'm just going to back stitch. Tabs in there. And then because we're binding, I can fold both of these over. And then I'm going to top stitch. I'm still going to back stitch even though I didn't chop it off. And I kind of have to pull on this top fabric to make it sit straight. It's fun like that. And then again, back stitch when you get to the edge of the fabric. Trim off your tails. And that's one half done. Then I'm going to grab my other side. And then I'm going to line that up with the other piece. I will cut off the excess tab, but just not yet. It's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Now, zipper tape and my waterproof canvas doesn't stretch, so I can definitely go left to right with that. Just the other one that has issues. And I'm also putting lining side up, zipper side up, and clips right side up. Everything's facing up. Now, this next one's going to be even slightly more tricky because now we've got two, uh, two straps that line up with each other. So they're going to make it even kind of bulkier. So I'm just going to go one end, then the other, and then pull. And I'm going to use my, my arm to sit it in place and then I can just come along and add the clips in. I've had practice so I definitely made that look easier than it is. This stuff super just, it's not even slippery, it's just not stretchy but stretchy. Zip is in the way this time around. Not sure why it wasn't last time, but whatever. Back stitch. Remove the clips. I'm going to move the whole basket because I know that it's going to get in the way. And then I'm going to pull both the lining and the top back. Fold this side over so it's out of my way. Stitch, back stitch, and up we go. Right. Voila! Trim off all the tails. Now I can come in with my scissors and trim off this excess here. And again, then we're going to want to melt it. Just because I promise it will fray. And even though it's a tiny little bit, it's like top and center and you don't want that. Right. Right sides together. Now, because I've made a few of these, I'm not clipping it. Uh, but if you decide to work with this fabric, I highly recommend you clip this. I'm going to do a three quarters of an inch seam allowance. Not quite a whole inch, uh, but this is counteracting the way that they designed the bag to be done with the drop in lining and the, the folding of the top. You want to go slowly over all that strapping section and a back stitch. Trim those tails. Flip it over and do this side. And again, if you're not into binding or it terrifies you and you don't want to try it, there is a video that I've done of this bag without binding. Now I'm just folding that um, zipper pocket out of the way. Back stitch. 
pull it out. I'm going to trim off some of this one, but not the other side. Like that. And those tails. And then you put your hand into the outside and just turn it in the right way and everything else just falls into place. Like that. So now we've got almost our shell. We're actually almost done. Now I'm going to stitch this together because I don't want it moving while I'm trying to add binding and stuff. So. I'm going to line up that bottom edge with my hand and hold it and then like a 3d object we're going to just stitch around the edge needle down flip this around so you want to absolutely make sure that these two pieces are joined a hundred percent because if they're not, we're going to have on picking later. Right, so see how I missed here? I promise that will be detrimental if I left it. So we're going to come back in. We're just going to fix it. Because again, slippery fabric. Trim off all the tails you can see. And then we're going to do the other side. Now, whichever way you folded your tabs this end, we want to do the same for this end so that there's no twist in the base. That's important as well. Uh, and you can clip this if you want to. I'm just stitching, I'm just basting, sorry, this at an eighth of an inch. There's nothing fantastic. You can do quarter if it's being tricky. that that's all stitched together. Fantastic. Now turn it back inside out. And open your zip. You want to open your zip before you put your ends in. So I'm going to grab an end. I'm going to put right sides together and I'm going to start bottom centre so that everything is lined up. And I want to stitch with the base down. So I'm going to do three at the bottom, three at the top, like this. Whoops! See, it's not a Tory video without dropping something. It's always clips, so. Alright, so we are now just pulling all of these layers together. You can put as many or as few clips as you want. Uh, for this, I am putting a lot because if this doesn't stitch together, then your binding doesn't work, and then you have to unpick all of it, and it's just not fun. We don't want to do that. Okay, and then I'm going to go... I like to go bottom to top. You don't have to. You can definitely go top to bottom. It's whatever you feel like really um, and with my three quarter of an inch seam allowance this should all work out because it did for the last two you'll notice I'm putting a lot of clips on this that is because I do not want it to shift while I'm joining it together not in the mood for that so now I'm just gonna stick it under the machine and pretty much on the same stitching lines I just did, I'm going to join it all together. And I'm just moving. 
moving the bag out of the way as I go around. Needle down, readjust. Last little bit. Back to the start and back stitch. Now, you want to check to make sure that you didn't miss anywhere. And I'm good with that. So there's no bits sticking out or anything. You can't see the overlocking stitch. Don't worry about this edge. We're going to deal with that in a minute. We're going to have to change machines though. I have to set up the camera so that you can see. Actually, that way. Right, so we're going to do the same thing again. Put the end in. And see how the tabs mean that I'm not stitching the zip? It's going to make this much easier because once you start adding binding as well, it gets up quite thick, especially if you're on a domestic machine. Which is also why I overlocked the edge. Now, if you don't have an overlocker, but you've got a domestic machine, you could zigzag the edge, which is the same basic principle. Lots of clips. Backstitch to lock it in. And around we go. of a seam allowance, all of this will actually be hidden in the binding that we're about to do. So again, trimming the tails, I'm going to turn it out to check that nothing is missing anywhere. And again, we've got another lovely one. So let's go to the binding machine and I'm going to show you how I'm going to quickly finish that. I can do it on this machine. If you watch my legit knit kit roll sewing tutorial, I do actually use this stuff in red to do the edges. You've just got to use a lot of pins and I'm really enjoying playing with my other machine. So let's go do that. All right. So for those that are new to my channel, this is my Elizabeth cylinder arm walking foot machine. It is glorious. Uh, and this is a binding tool. Uh, so this you just feed through and it folds it in half and we'll stitch it all on. So again, I always like to start with a straight bit. I'm just going to pop that in there like this. Stitch and back stitch. Now if I've lined it all up correctly, which it worked for the last bag, so it should work for this one. As I stitch around, it's pulling the binding through and stitching it on. We're just going to slow the binding. If you go too fast, it's likely to slip out and then not work. Uh, so this is the whole reason I bought this machine for the whole binding thing. This is how I bind my um, saddle blankets and stuff that I make. I use um, a polyester one is so I can singe and melt the ends. So now I'm getting close to back to the start. I'm actually going to cut off as much of this as possible like that 
and then I will just stitch over that last little bit when we get there. Alright, so I'm nearly back to the start. So now I'm going to trim here and just cut it out like that and then singe this end so that once it stitches on there will be no raw edges and nothing to fray. If you go really slowly with that, it should stitch the whole thing on for you. Sometimes I have to go back and um, fix the back tail. So like just there, oh, hold on, you can't see. So just there, I will flip this over and stitch that section down. Uh, but other than that, the whole thing's blinded. Except it did miss, so see how it's missed here? That means that I don't have it lined up properly. But that's also a pretty easy fix. One tiny little section is not so bad. So now I'm just going to re-thread the needle because it just come unthreaded. It's funny, the last bag I did off camera, everything went perfectly and I didn't have any of these dramas. Didn't have any lifting areas or nothing. This one, total opposite problem. But it's fine. So I'm just going to stick it under, stitch, back stitch. Yeah. Trim off those tails. I'm not actually sure if you can see what I'm doing right now. I'll put you on this side of the machine because otherwise I thought you would miss everything. So this is the size of the bobbin. Like it is ginormous, this thing. Right. So now we just have to reset the machine. And by reset, I mean we have to put the binding back through the binding thing. You'll notice I've got some um, tweezers here because for the most part I find it easier with tweezers to do. It's my little bobbin cap. So again, we're going to singe it. You see how it's carrying on. You just want to do it quickly. Pop it through there. And then you just kind of fold it in half and push it through here. And sometimes it goes really quickly and sometimes it likes to be stubborn. But you just need a little bit to pop out the other end and then you grab some tweezers and pull it through. Like that. That was actually not so bad. And then you kind of fold it, you dint it in there and put it through there. It's got these little claw bits that hold it in place for you. And then it clips back into place and should sit right up against the feet. So when you buy this kit, you get this plate with all of this stuff and the foot and everything. It's all kind of one big set, I guess. All right, so let's do the other one. And you'll notice that this moves with the foot because it's all clipped in together. And I'm just going to unroll a little bit more of this to give it some slack. And I'm just twisting the bag around. Now, I don't want to go too fast because I'm really hoping that this one's stitched up completely. So again, chopping off that excess. Thank <laughs> you. 
In fact, there's a little bit more excess there that I can probably get at. And this, we're just going to trim off here. Again with the melting, push it back over like that. And over we go. Back stitch, needle up, pull it out, and then we'll go check for gaps. Oh, see, this one was way better. I only got this gap here. Um, that could also partially be my error in that I'm pushing too much fabric into the binding. But it's a quick fix. And in my opinion, much quicker than all the pinning I would have done at the other machine. I don't think we would have been done yet. I'm just going to sew up those last little bits. Melt this a little bit better. Trim off this tail. So that side's now completely binded. And this side's just got one more little gap here. So what happens is if you push too much fabric into the binding, you can't completely get around it. I definitely think it's my error and not the machine's. But still, the bag's done, guys. That's it. There's no turning, there's no burping. You just put it through the top of the hole here. And it's done. Everything's top stitched and sits nicely. And then you can just push this out. And the edge of the bag allows it to sit. Oh, maybe do this side as well. It would also look really nice with some piping, but again, we're adding more and more and more to it. So that's what the bag looks like. I'm going to do one more step though, because I can. So I'm going to take this and about, about two inches up, I'm going to squish the strap in half. And then I'm just going to stitch it in half. Because I'm designing these for little girls to go to dance class. And they can't grab if you're in strap. So I'm just going to fold it in half and stitch it together. Now I could do this on this machine or the other one. But since I'm already here, I'm going to do it here. And then we stop about there. Back stitch it. Pull it out. Now, obviously, I didn't have to do that much. I could have just done the very, very top, and you could measure that. But now, it's just easy to grab. And I like that. So, yeah, you don't have to do the whole strap. Um, but I'm going to, because that's who I am. But yeah, if you wanted to, you could just middle uh, measure like the middle top five inches and just stitch that down. That would also work for you. You also want to make sure you do not get your needle. This is a size 20, actually I think 21's in today because uh, I was sewing a leather vest yesterday. It is a very intense needle. definitely think this one would go through your, your finger. Now I dropped my snips. Trim that off. Trim that off. There you go guys. One. And you can't really see. Hold on. Just spin that around. One gym bag. So you still got all your zippers and everything else but it's just floppier basically. Alright guys, I'm going to go and have some breakfast, I think, because it's about breakfast time. See ya!